In the 1960s, Don Yanko emerged as one of the SCCA's top road racers. But Yanko became famous for what he did away from the racetrack. He took regular Chevy production cars and turned them into bona fide racing machines, selling them at his Pennsylvania car dealership. Not many were made and relative few still survive, making Yanko's some of the most sought after collector cars in the world. Today, four partners and their team are taking on a huge challenge. Build a replica 1969 Camaro that uses today's technology but remains faithful to the original. It's a gamble that could breathe new life into a legend. Hello and welcome to another edition of Brand New Muscle Car. Our 1969 Yanko Camaro has suspension, brakes, and a beautiful coat of Daytona yellow. But there's something very important missing. The heart of any muscle car, the engine. In our last episode, the team unwrapped the Camaro's big block engine and bolted on the clutch. The five-speed Trebek transmission is designed to handle high horsepower, and this car has nearly 600 and the guys have to wedge all of those components under the hood of this 69 Camaro. When it comes to powertrain, drivetrain, I'm always concerned because that is one of the first things everyone's worried about as far as customers. Whether it's Yinko or another customer, it's here's the motor I want, here's the horsepower I want, here's the performance I want, I want an automatic or manual transmission, I want my clutch to be stiff or light. Or... So there's a lot of things to worry about. On my side, I do the parts. So I've got to make sure that I Give the customer what they want, but at the same time get the right parts in the right combination so that when Richard Nomar go to put it in, it actually works. And there's some trial and error to that. That's where I come in. I gotta figure out what makes the customer happy, what kind of sound they're looking for, and more importantly, I gotta figure out a way to package it and get it under the car. Looks like it ought to go. There it is. The parts combination on this car is unique, so the team won't know how well things fit until they actually try it. These things fit really, really snug. And after all that effort, the transmission won't fit by just a fraction of an inch. Richard grinds off enough powder coating to get the transmission to fit. He and Omar need a little help putting it back in, so they turn to Martin, the shop's chief body man. Hey, what are you doing sitting down? We're not done yet. Hey, I'm working so hard. Oh, well, we got stuff to do. The guys I work with here are really good. There's the inner shop stuff that goes on. But at the end of the day, if I need those guys, the paint guys, to come over and help, you know, they'll run right over. If they need us, that's just how it works. I mean, we all work really well together. You have to be able to set stuff aside to get the job done. The job comes first here, always, no matter what. And Chief Body Man Martin is glad to pitch in on the final step, drilling a hole for the shifter. It's a new day, and the car is on the hydraulic lift once again, ready for the next step. Now, now you start connect everything, or you put the transmission first? We'll put the transmission in, get the cross member in it, get the engine sitting straight, let it down one last time, hook everything up top side, hit the key and watch it go boom. The starter motor's been installed, and the transmission has been put back into place. I guess we're ready for a battery now. Yeah. All right, battery time. This continuation car will drive like a new car, but look just like the original, right down to the last detail. This is a modern, sealed, maintenance-free battery from Classic Industries, and it's made to look just like the classic AC Delco R59 model that came in the original 69 Camaro. Everything looks good? Yeah, everything's good on my side. Get everything over here? Yeah, I think it's ready to start. Hey, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think you're gonna fire this bad boy up without us. Come on now, we gotta, we gotta throw some money down. We gotta bet on this thing. Is that right? It'll gotta, start. It'll, it'll start. start. <laughs> I got saying it won't start on the first one, on the first crank. Oh. 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 Throwing it down. Anybody beat that? Okay. It will start. <laughs> it will start. All right, okay. all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> Starts. He's right. throwing the Walmart hey, so, card out. Hey, Tony, I don't know about you, but all I got on my commissary is uh, two rolls of toilet paper and two cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> You're on, Matt. There we go. The bed is on. I'm taking this back just in case it does start. <laughs> <laughs> go 
Let's fire this bad boy up. Thank you. Damn it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go. Let's go. We got front. Coming up. We see if this brand new muscle car comes to life on the first try. And we look at some of the original hardware that inspired this brand new muscle car. Classic Industries presents brand new muscle car Yanko Camaro is brought to you by Willwood Disc Brakes, high performance disc brakes in brake components. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day on auto parts and accessories. R3 Performance, quality parts, attention to detail, and innovative design. And by Classic Industries, America's first choice in restoration and performance parts and accessories. Welcome back to the brand new muscle car shop in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The engine is in, and it's time for the moment of truth. Are you guys ready? That sounds good. That sounds awesome, man. It smells good, too. The engines we've gotten from Performance Unlimited, we've had really good luck with. Fired right up, sounded great, no leaks, no problems. It's probably going to run like a bat. Put a steering wheel on that thing. Who needs a steering wheel? We're going straight. <laughs> what do you think it'd do to those tires? Let's melt them. Those little bitty tiny ones? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there wouldn't be nothing left. In our last episode, we showed you how the team test fitted the radiator and hoses. Now they'll fasten the hoses for real and they'll use a pretty ingenious tool to get the job done. Clamp tight is just the coolest little tool ever. If you see how it works once, you're in. We brought it here, we showed it to all the guys and they instantly said, I gotta have it. And that's what I said when I saw it the first time, is I gotta have one of those. Guys, I'm gonna make a hose clamp out of wire. It's 10 times stronger, 90% lighter. So to get started, we're gonna measure around our project four times and add 12 inches. And you take your wire. You're gonna bring the ends together and make a loop. Then you're gonna feed the ends through that loop. And then you're gonna do that one more time, the exact same way around, right up through the center of the first one. Just grab the wire, take it around, just like so. Go through, make sure you're not cross or twisted because you want a nice, even seal. Now we're gonna attach the tool. Take the nose of the tool, push it right up underneath of that loop. Then we're gonna wrap it up and around each of the pegs, and then twist those together, just like a bread tie. There's a notch at the bottom of the tool. That's what you pop the loop into, and just start turning. So what it's doing is just pushing and pulling on that wire and tightening it around your project instead of twisting it. So I know you're familiar with safety wire pliers, right? You twist and twist right, and eventually yeah. snap and break. It's not gonna happen with this. You're gonna keep turning until you get to the tightness you want it to be, and you're gonna feel it. The tool's gonna start getting hard to turn, as well as getting nice and tight up against your project. So now you're ready to close it off. If you have the space, you're going to flip it 180 degrees. If you don't, because a lot of times you don't have that much space, just past 90 degrees is all you need. You cut the wire on both sides of the tool, the tool's gonna fall away. The tab's left standing, you bend over, that's your hose clamp. But if you do have the room, let me show you the full all the way over. Loosen, pull the tool away, take your cutters, cut about a quarter of an inch or so, and then you wanna bend those tabs back down, just like that, and that's your hose clamp. Looks great, looks good. The great thing is too, if you're doing a vintage car or original, you can actually take one of those clamps, slide right over top of ours, and it gives you a better seal, 360 degrees without any flat spots, and you're back to rigid. Awesome. How about we have to take it off? To take it off, bend the tabs back out, just like that. Grab that center, comes right off. Could reuse it on something smaller, or if you wrap it multiple times, you can put it right back on the same project minus a loop. Looks great, let's get the stuff on the car. Okay. The best thing about the clamp tight tool is it can make custom clamps, any size that you need it to be on any size project. The American Muscle Car Museum in Melbourne, Florida, a $40 million collection open only to charity fundraisers. It houses the most extensive collection of original Yanko cars in the entire world, including one of the most rare. This week's Yanko Collector Spotlight features Don Yanko's American Challenger to more expensive European sports coupes. 
One of the things that's always been very impressive about Don Yanko was his innovation and his forward thinking and his focus to see the next big thing coming. In 1971, he'd seen this Vega as an underpowered possibility to make a high performance car out of it. He'd got one out, got a turbocharger on it, did some tests, got a couple of the major magazines out who actually rated it very highly and very successful as far as the performance adds on. So Don initiated an order of 200 cars for 1971. He wanted to eventually get to 500 so it could fall within the SCCA guidelines for running the cars. And all of a sudden, the EPA stepped in and says, not so fast. Before you put a turbocharger on or you modify any intake or exhaust on a dealer, you have to have 50,000 mile testing on this car to prove it's still within our guidelines. In 1972, he ordered another 200 cars hoping he could install the turbochargers. Unfortunately, he could not convince the EPA or do the 50,000 mile test. It was available, however, as a kit that you could buy for another $500 over the counter or it would come in the back of the car to be installed by dealers later on. One of the things that Don's ingenuity and ingenious did realize is that the original pistons would not hold up to a turbocharger. He got with GM and he had a Vega specific engine that was a Copo number order that had forged aluminum pistons that would withstand the extra heat, the extra wear, and the extra tear that we put on them pistons. As he moved along, he originally started out with the Ray J turbochargers. Unfortunately, Ray J could not keep up with the production and ended up switching to a Schweitzer brand turbocharger. When we come back, Richard continues to shoehorn even more components under the hood. Photos and documents shown on brand new muscle car Yanko Camaro, courtesy of Mark Gillespie. For even more about Don Yanko and the supercars that made his dealership famous, look online for the Yanko era and the Yanko era continued Cannonsburg and beyond. I'm amazed that the whole thing survived 50 years in terms of reputation and popularity. Frankly, I'm kind of flattered that people come to me asking me a lot of questions about my involvement in Yanko and my knowledge of the history. It was very educational for me when Warren, Donna Mae Mims and I started putting together our first Yanko book back in 2004 and 2005 to be reminded of all the things that happened at that time and start putting all the pieces of the puzzle back together. Because like anybody over a period of 50 years time, your memory kind of plays tricks on you. The number that everybody had been publicizing for years, I believe, was 54 cars had been converted by Yanko in 1967. Well, lo and behold, we find that there are parts invoices for twice that many cars to be converted. And in recent years, a couple of cars have popped out of the woodwork that didn't actually have the Yanko number tags on them, but they had all the appropriate parts and invoices. So we're thinking a few cars slipped out the back door somewhere through one of the various operations that never had a Yanko tag attached to them, but they used the parts that were actually uh, intended to do that. And so a lot of mysteries have been solved, but a lot of new questions have also been raised about what actually happened. But here we are 50 years later, so much of it's still speculation, which kind of makes the thing a little mysterious and makes it more fun for a lot of people too. Back here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, mechanics Omar and Richard are ready for the next step in the build process. Omar's putting together the dash for the Camaro. He's putting the, the gauges and the lights and HVAC controls, all that stuff in. While he's doing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on the brake system. Now, the original car had a single diaphragm, 11 inch booster on it. Now, with the engine that we have in this particular car, the valve covers are so much bigger, there's physically no room to have an 11 inch diaphragm in here. So, we're going with a new and more modern dual diaphragm, nine inch. Now, what that means is even though this unit is smaller than the 11 inch unit, it has two diaphragms instead of one. So we have double the surface area to exert pressure onto the master cylinder. What that really means is with less pedal effort, you have more braking pressure, kind of like the dual disc clutch that we put in the car also. More holding power, less pedal effort. Richard finds that the brake booster just barely clears the valve covers. Wow, that's really close, but close is all we need. One more component means one more problem, but Richard takes a methodical approach every time there's a roadblock. I stop everything I'm doing, take a step back, take a breath, and then take a look at it all over again and try and find the best way to fix it. If you just slow down, look at it, take a little time, it goes together the first time. Okay, so we found out the windshield washer pump will not clear these great big aluminum valve covers. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to remove the washer pump from the windshield wiper motor, and that way we'll have enough room. But hey, less weight makes it go faster. This is the washer pump. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove it from this housing so I can put the housing back on. Uh, Richard's really great. He knows this stuff. He's been doing it a really long time. He's actually a drag race guy, so he's a car nut. He's got a bunch of different cars, a bunch of different drag cars. It's his passion, and I love people that this is not just a job, it's a passion. When I come to work, it's something different. It's today we're trying to put this square peg into this round hole and make it work. And that's what I like to challenge. I like to be frustrated. I like, you know, I don't always like things to be easy because then you don't have to figure nothing out. Okay, going back together with it. There's no such thing as a bolt on. You bolt it on a couple of three different times before it actually works. Put it back on the car. We'll move on to the next step. There are definitely guys out there that are a lot smarter than I am, but a lot of it is knowing what doesn't work versus what works because you don't know what works obviously until it works so you go through a lot of things that don't work every car that we do in each stage that we do gets easier because we know what we didn't want to do on the last one and what we're going to do on the next one and it just makes it faster still more to come everything on this 69 camaro continuation car is custom next richard and omar taylor make fuel lines to fit and function exactly right Classic Industries presents brand new muscle car Yanko Camaro is brought to you by Champion Cooling Systems, High Performance Aluminum Radiators, Heat Shield Products, America's High Performance Insulation, C-Max, the one product for your engine, transmission, and fuel system, and by brand new muscle car, building yesterday's dream cars today. We're back at the brand new muscle car shop in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where the work continues for mechanics Richard and Omar. What do you think today, Omar, running, getting these fuel lines up out of the way, to get our fuel filter mounted? I think if we go down the frame rail, stay on the outside all the way, and then once we put our subframe connectors in, that'll give us somewhere to mount it here in the middle. So you wouldn't want to run it through the middle of the car? Well, I thought about that too, but on this particular car, running the fuel lines down the tunnel poses a couple of problems. For one, obviously, we have the drive shaft coming through here, but on this car, the parking brake cables are gonna be run down the middle of the car, too, and then the exhaust is gonna be tucked up pretty high because this car sits pretty low. So I think on this car, we're gonna be better off to run it outside the frame. That way, the fuel lines stay out of danger. Okay, so I guess let's get these uh, strung out and measured, get them off the car, and cut, and the new fittings put on it, and we'll be done with this part. One of the things that's interesting about brand new muscle car is when we build one of these cars, they look old, they drive new, but very, very frequently people change the powertrain, the brakes, the fuel system. So when we talk about wiring, plumbing, drivetrain, you're mashing together old and new stuff. So that changes the wiring, changes the plumbing. So you may have to have bigger lines, better lines, lines with better heat capacity. Obviously, when you're talking about fuel injection, you've got more fuel, more power, more wiring. The reason why you see two fuel lines here is one is the pressure side going to the throttle body, the second is the return side going back to the gas tank. And the reason why fuel injection systems do that is that ensures a constant stream of nice cool fuel going to the front, up to the throttle body. And not like the old school carburetors where the gas literally just sat in the bowls and got hot. Typically an engine runs anywhere from 180 to 200 degrees. This makes sure that we get nice cool fuel all the way to the front and the more cool fuel you can get in the engine, the more power it's going to make. What we're going to do now is we're going to change the fuel fittings on the back of the throttle body. These are banjo style fittings and what that does is gives us a real low profile coming out of the throttle body so we can put the stock air cleaner on. With the old style fittings that were on there, the air cleaner wouldn't fit. So we're going to go to these so we can get the stock air cleaner back on it. So now we're going to be marking the lines to the size we need. That way we could pull the hoses back out and do a nice cut. You can use body shop tape or a lot of guys use electrical tape. What that does is that keeps it from fraying when you cut it. What Omar's doing now is he's just gonna zip tie our fuel lines in place so they'll stay in mock-up and then later, after we get the exhaust on, we'll permanently mount them. Okay, we've got the fuel safely drained out of our lines and got them mapped out. So now it's time to change the ends. All right. 
right, take our fitting apart. A little assembly lube. Screw half of our fitting on. And then we screw the whole assembly together. The good thing about these AN style fittings is the collar goes on counterclockwise until the hose bottoms out and then the fitting screws into the collar and then you tighten it up and you have a leak free connection just like that. We've got to figure out as we spec a build out with a customer what options do they want, what options do they not want and what things do I need to change. And then we'll change the end on the return. Fuel lines, brake lines, we do have to sometimes make those. So literally Richard and Omar will, will hand make brake lines and fuel lines depending on uh, what horsepower the car is, how much fuel it needs, is it an electric fuel pump, does it have a supercharger, right? If you go from 300, 400, 500 horse to like seven or 800 horse, much more fuel. So different fuel lines, bigger fuel lines, a return line for the fuel injection. So we have to custom do a lot of that. Okay, return side done. We've seen all the parts that make this brand new muscle car go. Next week, the mechanics build the system that'll make it stop. And the team works hard to make the inside of this new car look and feel just like the original. I'm, I know I'm ugly, but look, 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 look. Yeah, you see? You see, you see, you see the, like, like the angle? Nice, right? Look at this one. Don't tell me this one is better. I like that one better. <laughs> I like that one better. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you're lucky you didn't say, hey, give me from my good angle. <laughs> Everything's good. <laughs>